Hey everybody, Fishman here. Welcome to another video. I've been meaning for quite some time now to put together a freshwater version of the algae scrubbers I've been using on my marine tanks and test that out. The nice thing about freshwater though is it has access to vascular plants which uh, don't exist in the marine system. So I don't have to just use algae. I can use any of the fast growing plants like hornwort or elodea or anacris, all those sorts of things. So I want to make this a little bit more flexible. And the part of the reason why I'm getting into it right now is I got a comment on the video where I was testing out my planter filter, the high humidity one for the ammonia tests. Uh, someone mentioned that it wasn't exactly a fair test because it is, well, it's a combination filter, right? Uh, a filter feeds into the high humidity and also because there are pots in there and there are other plants and also uh, lava rock and a whole pile of other things. Uh, there's lots of substrate there for, well, surface area for bacteria, and it is not exactly a plain system, but it is the style of planter filter that I've been using, and I really do like them, and, I, and again, I wanted to test it out. But to test out, to see if a planter filter has uh, any kind of advantage whatsoever in just dealing with the ammonia itself, I need to do, of course, a bare uh, tank test, like I've been doing with all the other filters. So that is the initial uh, reason that I'm putting this together. Long term though, I want to be able to use this as a filter. It's going to be part of the canopy for that tank. It's going to have its own light. It's going to be on the timer system and everything. And I do want to try out a bunch of different things with it. But initially, it is just going to be uh, probably f first off a planter filter. I'm going to put in hornwork because I have an awful lot of it and I'm going to make a nice baffle system in here so it will like the water will come down one side up the other and down again just to give it a good flow good chance to have access to the plants and the plants of course can uh, thereby you know absorb as much of the ammonia as they can so that is going to be the initial test and that is why I'm fitting it uh, to fit on this particular tank here it will allow me to See if, again, if just plain plant uh, metabolism is enough to uh, deal with the amount of ammonia that's going in this. I have had uh, one issue with one plant, but that was Valicinaria, uh, with the amount of ammonia I've been using. Uh, but I haven't had any issues so far with uh, hornwort, so I'm going to try that, and we'll see how that goes. And then, uh, depending upon interest and all that other sort of thing, I may also just uh, get this going as an algae scrubber. Uh, it will take some modifications to get it to work that way, but I think it, uh, I think it can be done. So uh, I will set that up as well, If, uh, like I said, again, if there is interest in it. But for the moment, what I want to do is I just want to make a nice open tray system here. It's going to sit on the top, be part of the canopy, and I'm going to give it its own light system. And because of, well, not really just because of COVID, but because of uh, lots of things, uh, situations and whatnot, I am pretty much hooked on recycling as much as possible. So this is part of uh, the original canopy system that I had on the tank that I'm taking down to put up that really large U-shaped pallidarium. Now, obviously, they're going to get new materials and everything, so I had this, uh, these, well, it's the aluminum and the light strips that were there. So I am going to uh, cannibalize that and cut them down to the right size so they fit over uh, this particular filter. And uh, it's just going, like I said, it's, they're going to be used, but uh, they're still quite bright. They're very good strips, as you, you'll notice as this goes along. There's a couple of minor things I had to uh, change to get them to work properly, uh, but that had nothing to do with the quality of the light. It had to do with the fact that Oh, well, they've been over an aquarium for a while, so the silicone that's uh, acting as a vapor barrier for the strips, uh, it was a little too sticky when it came to the actual uh, pads where I had to do the welding, uh, sorry, the soldering, and I had to just go to the main pads. Uh, nothing really important, it just made a, I mean, it just meant that I had to do a slightly wonkier version of the wiring that I would like. I prefer them just to go uh, straight across so they don't have too much in the way of wiring. But like I said, those uh, the copper pads, like every four, I think this every four of these uh, LED tapes or strips, sorry, you'll see that there. Are, oh, sorry, it's three. Every three of these, uh, there is uh, two copper pads that you, and those are the places that you can cut these. Uh, I'm cutting one right here now, and uh, normally you can just solder straight to those. 
but the tape was a little old, like I said, and it was not accepting the solder very well. So that meant I had to go to the main solder joints, and they're only every uh, 20 inches, I think, on these. Uh, and I had to waste a little bit more tape, but uh, one of the things when you do recycling, you do have to make some allowances for things. One of the things I'm really uh, happy about here, though, is you can see how hard this is to get off. Uh, this is actually really good quality tape, and uh, I went to stick it on here, and it sticks really well. I did end up putting extra zip ties on it just to be, you know, on the safe side because I don't want one of these falling off. But I don't think it's going to be much of an issue because, it, like again, it stuck really quite well. One other thing I want to mention before I forget, you'll notice on the end brackets, uh, the two vertical parts, there are two holes drilled in each of those, and the reason that they're there is I want to be able to keep this as flexible as possible. So I want to be able to change the height of this. Currently when I set this up, I'm going to have it uh, right down over top of the filter and to give it maximum light because uh, I want to grow uh, either the hornwort or whatever other plant or algae that's in there uh, as much as possible. Um, so I'm going to keep it nice and low. But later on, uh, after the ammonia experiments are done, I'm going to probably convert this into something else. Uh, not necessarily a pure planter filter, well, depending on how that works. Uh, but I do want to keep it uh, active and I want to test other stuff out with it. Uh, so I'll probably use it in some form of aquaponics as time goes on. But again, I'm, I don't know for sure. I mean, it depends on, of course, how this all works out. But this way, at least, it'll be a lot more flexible. So I'm going to put these zip ties on here. Uh, again, I don't think they're really necessary, but there's no point in taking any chances on this. And this just keeps it a little bit more secure anyway. And the other thing is I really do need to buy some shorter ones. Uh, these work, obviously, and are much more uh, useful for a lot of projects, uh, but having a few little teeny ones around just for this sort of stuff would mean a, you know, a lot less wastage of plastic. It's actually kind of funny seeing this now that it's been cut down to size. I mean, this bracket is really quite flexible, but I usually build them in the you know, 4, 6, and even up to 8 foot range. And seeing this now at a, just under 16 inches, it is kind of, you know, not bulky really, but it is overkill for this sort of thing. But I find this bracket style uh, very useful, and as you can see, uh, easily converted from, well, I think this is almost 5 feet, uh, down to this. And it doesn't take much in the way to convert it. And all I have to do is take the bolts out, uh, cut the aluminum, and then uh, re-solder things, and then it's pretty much good to go and that's actually really kind of cool and, I, and speaking of cooling uh, it is really good for a heat sink I mean this tape doesn't really get that hot or anything uh, but if you keep it as cool as possible it really does uh, increase the longevity of the tapes and I've been getting it to last quite a long time with this format so I'm very happy with it I'm gonna show you this uh, simply because those are the pads I was talking about and it is very easy always to solder to these because that is just a solder joint anyway and it, I meant to leave a little bit of uh, me trying to solder to one of the copper pads uh, but this video is getting really long at that point and I didn't really think you wanted to watch me fiddle with uh, this soldering for you know 10 minutes just trying to get it to hook up to one of these pads uh, sorry one of the copper pads so I thought I would just throw this in here because I hadn't shown you any uh, soldering in quite some time but this is uh, always uh, effective, and uh, this is the best way of doing it. Even though in this particular case you see, and as this progresses you're going to see even more of it, uh, the wires end up kind of uh, all over the place. But this is going to be hidden in the long run. So you're going to see those are the wires, and they just went from, uh, like I said, from solder pad to solder pad. And uh, it is a little ugly looking uh, but it is not going to be visible long term and then what I'm going to do is I will uh, put a little bit of silicone over the top of those just to make sure they don't get wet and that's it so here it is sitting in a tank I put a couple brackets on uh, off camera and uh, it's just to hold it in place uh, this is not going to be its final configuration but this is roughly where it's going to go and this is a simple matter of uh, hooking up a pump to this and there it is there and fill it up and I'm just gonna let it run for a few minutes I am going to turn this off almost right away after filming this because as you can see bubbling right in the front of the screen there I haven't finished the ammonia test for the two two stage box filter so that has to finish first before I put this on here so it did stir up the tank a little bit but I just wanted to make sure it worked 
and there you go and I, I have yet obviously uh, to adjust uh, the height of the water in it and the flow and everything else but I'll do all that after uh, the other filters done so I'll get all that stuff done and we'll get it all hooked hooked up so here you go the lights on it and like I said I'm gonna turn this off right away and this can easily be uh, covered up with uh, a piece of black acrylic which I will do in the front to make it look nice but again that's uh, all for a later time so as always, if you like this style of video, please like and or subscribe and leave lots of comments and let me know what you think. And thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next video and bye for now.